Welcome to Accelerating Procurement Transformation with TCS. Uh, my name is Christina O'Brien and I'll be moderating today's session. So throughout this roundtable discussion, we'll be hearing from a variety of industry experts who will be sharing their experiences and know-how on source to pay best practices, innovations, and partnership capabilities. Our speakers today um, will be Prashant Sugar, um, who heads the global SAP practice at TCS. He's going to be speaking uh, to the overall importance of spend management and TCS's approach to addressing the needs of our customers. Uh, next, we'll have Dario Kulic, who is the P2P process owner at Elanco. He'll be answering questions about his experience in transforming Elanco's end-to-end procure-to-pay process and how utilizing Ariba and TCS assisted in Elanco's uh, achieving their spend management goals. After that, we'll hear from Falco Felchin from Ariba's Procurement Center of Excellence. He's going to be conducting a whiteboard session, which will showcase Ariba's most recent and future innovations across both indirect and direct spend. Uh, Pranay Nayar, uh, Pranay Nayar uh, who heads the intelligence spend management practice at TCS, is going to be speaking on the capabilities and differentiators that TCS offers in the intelligence spend management space. And to conclude our session, Eric O'Brien, who manages the global pre-sales team of TCS's intelligence spend management practice, will be giving the closing remarks and answering any final questions. If you do have any questions throughout the roundtable, we really encourage you to submit them at any point using the Q&A box. Uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can as time permits. So with that, let's jump right in and hear from Prashant Sugar. Over to you, Prashant. Thank you, Christina, and uh, warm welcome to all of you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our participants. Uh, I see that we have participation from uh, di diverse uh, industry segments and locations. And jumping straight to the topic that we are meeting here today for, uh, in our experience, uh, engaging with uh, the procurement function, the CPO organization across uh, direct and indirect procurement, we are sensing a continual shift from the role of the CPOs and the procurement function, shifting from one of being enablement uh, to being that of a transformation player. The, the erstwhile role that still continues to hold significant importance uh, related to uh, being able to manage compliance, reduce the, uh, the overall spend for the same value that the organization uh, gets in, manage the risks effectively, is shifting to transformation where two things are becoming more and more com uh, imperative. For example, the ecosystem collaboration, the innovation that you can do with your supplier base to drive value chain uh, optimization in your organization is becoming very, very significant. The second aspect is a smart sourcing. The third aspect is how does procurement as a function reduce the overall time to market for the organization in giving outcomes to its end customers? And finally, predictive analytics is becoming uh, an increasingly influential factor in helping the procurement function to be able to drive decisions on spend management, decisions on supplier performance, and so on. So if you look at uh, all of this and the shift that is happening towards the transformation aspect of procurement from the traditional modes of operating the procurement function, the, the shift is being enabled by solutions like TCS Ariba. And the, the, the value that comes out of implementing such solutions is exactly the, the role that CPOs are looking for from a transformation perspective. And that is towards opening up the ecosystem for collaboration, joint innovations, user experience and productivity, ability to fit Ariba into your ERP landscapes and drive value across the end-to-end -end procurement processes. and Finally, bringing in the element of predictive capabilities and analytics to be able to drive faster decision making. We at TCS ourselves, as a $22 billion organization, embarked on implementation of Ariba, and we have seen significant benefits 
to the tune of about 9% uh, optimization in the overall uh, sourcing volumes and about 20% faster time to realize value. Uh, with that experience and experience from having implemented Ariba for various uh, customer organizations, we embarked on modifying that experience into a pre-configured solution that is branded as TCS Crystalis. And on top of Crystalis, we have implemented APIs across value chain functions because just implementation of a product will not help shift from traditional mode of uh, the procurement function to the transformational mode. So KPI enabled uh, pre-configured deployment of Ariba brings in faster time to value, reduce time to market. And my colleague Pranay Nair will speak about that as we go along. So without uh, further ado, I'm giving it back to you, Christina, to take us through uh, this journey today. Great. Christina, over to you. Great, thanks so much, uh, Prashant. Really appreciate that. Um, those those insights, especially going from your know, traditional mode into this uh, transformative approach for uh, procurement. So, with that, um, let's move on to our speaker, uh, Dario Kulich. Uh, so, Dario, um, we can move on to you for our Q&A session. Uh, as a reminder, Dario is the PDP process owner at Alanco. Um, and before we dive into the questions, can you please help us set the stage for Alanco's journey into the P2P space? Yes, so um, hi everybody. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, it's, uh, it, it's an I would say it's an honor to <laughs> to be a guest speaker today here and um, yeah, let me just give you a little bit of my introduction. So my name is Dario Kulic. I am uh, now the P2P uh, um, GPO for the Elanco organization, whereas uh, as I've been previously the GPO for, for Bayer Animal Hearts and this was had been carved out. Um, we are still uh, working on two separate systems. So, and uh, the moment it is that we have actually two GPOs in uh, in Elanco, whereas the the legacy system from from uh, the carved out system is uh, under under my responsibility, and uh, the the legacy Elanco on the, on another uh, person uh, GPO responsibility. But nevertheless, um, many things are uh, are similar, and uh, yeah, the the journey actually. Um, which started last year, uh, not in August, but already before August, uh, was a very long journey and a very sometimes bumpy, but very interesting and and, and very um, I would say also challenging and ex and I think I, I learned a lot of new things and experiences, especially with especially working with 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 TCS together because with working with TCS together is really um, I, I I like it very much and it is very diverse, um, so maybe just for, for as an introduction also in procurement. So I have more than 15 years uh, of experience in procurement uh, across the whole board, um, but uh, almost 10 years really in sourcing and category management. Uh, but I've been also commodity buyer in the automotive. Um, so I've seen many things in procurement. So I, I actually there's maybe one or two or three industries I haven't yet seen, but uh, they are maybe rarely. So maybe aer aeronautic and uh, <laughs> everything that has to do with <laughs> aerospace. But uh, yeah, who knows where the future lies. Huh? So they're on your list, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And military. I haven't had military also. <laughs> <laughs> One day, one day, right? Um, so, so maybe then we can move into some of the questions based on all your experiences then. Um, so based on your experience, how should someone best prepare for a project um, of you know this great magnitude? I think this is one of the best uh, and most difficult questions actually. <laughs> and uh, it's a very good question. So. To, to be honest to the audience, um, where I thought that I am best prepared, uh, I always got proved <laughs> wrongly later on. So the, I think the, the answer is you, you can't be best prepared as such. Of course, um, what, what I can give as a recommendation to everybody is if you have enough time and, and planning, utilize as much as possible in, in terms of planning. And when it comes to planning, one of the most important criteria is change management. Because when it comes to such a project where 
an, an organization and also the complete system is carved out. And um, the, the users or let's say the, the, the employees, the requisitioners are then also confronted with new, not completely with a new system, but also with new aspects of the system. And uh, by knowing also that the employees are getting always distracted, especially six months prior to a day one with, with their own activities, with their own cleanup of, of, of workspaces and so on. It is very uh, uh, important to have a good change management and to get everybody on board uh, for, from, from an employee perspective, because the earlier you start, the less issues you will later on have, especially after a day one where you then face the situation that you have 2000 people, you have then to retrain and retrain and retrain. And uh, in, in the midst of, uh, let's say, going live and having these and that issues, and this is always happening. Yeah? So you will never have a perfect system. It's, it's, it's normal. Eh? You, you will always have, doesn't matter how big your team is, you will always have something what you didn't think about or, or some, some kind of a, a questions you, you did not answer before. And uh, these, um, these ad hoc situations then later on, you will need all the time to solve these ad hoc situations and uh, will less have time to retrain and retrain and answer all the questions actually also from the users. And maybe this is also another point if you have the possibility, and I think this is also a question of how big an organization is. Now, so how big is the organization which is maybe carved out or moving into a new system? Um, if you can establish a prior to a day one a P2P help desk, for example, uh, then I can recommend to do it. <laughs> Because here a lot of time is, is consumed actually uh, uh, during, I would say, the first three to six months uh, after carve out and um, uh, users need this. Yeah, so the, the, the employees also need to have a um, to need to have confidence. Yeah, they need to also to have trust in, 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 uh, in the new systems and uh, you will only establish this confidence and trust also if you give them support all the time. Yeah? So it's really all the time. And now talking about the organization, it depends on. Yeah? So Elanco, of course, and Bayer Animal Health, global organization, 35 countries which were involved in this uh, go live was, was really a massive thing. And um, you should also be prepared to, especially when you're in a GPO, to be almost 27, 24 seven actually available for everybody. Yeah? So especially also in the time zones, because the people also not always know where you are located and actually also don't care, <laughs> to be honest. So this is maybe also something you should be prepared for. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, I, I really like the emphasis of you know time and planning, really focusing on change management, because if we are going into transformative procurement space, right, um, you're going to need that adoption from everyone. Everyone does need to be on board. So yes. allowing that um you know that time that planning putting in the work up front so that hopefully mm -hmm. when after you go live and move forward everything can be as smooth as possible great yes. um great great uh, insights and and advice there all right maybe, maybe, um, maybe one additional just one additional advice which uh, which is i mean it's an important one but also here i see sometimes that it, it's not always everything let's say um planned completely through and these are the regulat regulatory framework. Uh, so when you're going from one company and organization into another, so the regulatory framework can also change uh, depending on the, the, the country of the headquarter where it is sitting. And uh, here, uh, for example, in this case, uh, Bay Animal Health moved into an, a regulatory framework of um, um, of, of uh, U US regulatory, so, so also becoming SOX uh, uh, compliant, which was not the case before. And uh, there are, of course, then new implications which have to go to, to be to be thought of. And if it is not thought of, you will have these situations then after day one, and then it's becoming very uh, time critical to, to get this implemented before you're getting audited, before you're getting into SOX getting live. So let's say that is. <laughs> Yeah, great. Thank you so much for that for that addition. OK, let's move on to uh, the next question then. Uh, so and, and I think we've you know been been touching on it on this as well uh, with the previous question, but maybe you can just elaborate a little bit more. Um, so what are those you know biggest challenges you've come across in the midst of the transformation? I would say where I got my personal challenge and um, 
You need also to know that uh, in my case, I've I've not only been the GPO, but I've also built up the complete procurement organization for for the day one, and I had to train everybody. So <laughs> really, I, I were responsible fully to train everybody in procurement, and the challenge here was that we moved out of a out of a more or less perfect system. Yeah, which was established since a decade and everybody was relying on with, a, with I would say, a perfectly working shared service center. And then moving for the first time into an environment where a no shared service center is available for the beginning, yeah, maybe also for the first uh, one to two years. And there's a lot of transactional work which is then shifted actually to, to the employees which they were not uh, facing before. And uh, this is this is again coming to change management, but this is a big challenge. So to, to get really everybody on the, yeah, not only on, on, on the track that they know how to do the transactional work, but also to to try to lower the frustration as, po as much as possible that uh, you have to, to, to bring the message to the employees now. Uh, you have now to take over a little bit more in the beginning yeah, then you had to do it before. So it, it's a bit of a comfort zone. Uh, you're that the people are leaving. Yeah, so and uh, I think this is one of the biggest challenges. That, uh, what was it? And, and still it is. I mean, I would say it still it is. And the training, I think also the training uh, uh, brought me to my personal. I think personal uh, uh, borders yeah, of of uh, being resilient and not getting frustrated because you will also encounter that you can train as much as possible. There will always be 25 to 50 percent of the people that come back and back and back with the same questions. And um, yeah, you need to have really patience and resilience to yeah, to retrain and retrain and answer all the time the same questions. So, you know, I would say, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and with I, I change. Yeah, change is, is very hard, so I'm sure, um, you know, it's once once they put in the effort and the time to you know make sure that they know how to use the system then yes. they can really start uh, getting the benefits of this transformation and seeing that but trying to overcome that initial hurdle i'm sure is is quite challenging so um and the more and and you were saying with the training and having resilience and you know, people probably not reading or paying attention whenever they should be, um, you know, the more that you can do to provide that, um, you know, that confidence to people to get them that yeah. practice to to feel like, yes, I know how to use this, the better off. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, you can face a maybe, challenge. <laughs> maybe to give a, a, a practical example, which is it is very interesting. Yeah? So we started before day one with a training package for everybody, which was so let's say the training package including Ariba, SAP, VIM, everything what what the business needs actually yeah? from starting from a requisition until the invoice is really paid, approved and uh, approved and paid. So we started with a package of training which was around maybe 10 to 12 hours. So the first reaction was, oh my gosh, how do I take now 12 hours to make all the training? Yeah, so all right, we were thinking about it to reduce it. Now we reduced it then afterwards to five hours. And guess what? Even the five hours were too much <laughs> for, for everybody as a reaction. So I think here uh, it doesn't matter how much you always shrink it down. Yeah, so you, you need to find a good balance of uh, also getting the people on board and, and try to explain them. Look, even if you're having now five hours, you should invest these five hours. Uh, uh, because it will solve many, many issues then afterwards. Oh. <laughs> great, great advice. Um, super. Any other challenges that you want to mention at this time or you want to move on to our next question of the day? I mean, yeah, so I think what I mentioned in the beginning is we were talking about 35 countries. So making project management also for 35 countries is, I think, a massive challenge. So this is not to, to be really underestimated. Yeah, and coming to practical things, if you have a, if you talk about SAP and we talk about PO layouts, so printed POs which are sent to the suppliers via email, all those ones need to be adapted uh, to to the country needs, uh, localized needs, and um, uh, you will never be perfect in these kind of layouts. And always somebody comes then when something is established, then afterwards and said, why I haven't been asked. <laughs> 
<laughs> why I didn't give you this information. And you, you will face the challenge, actually. You will never get everybody on board because you sometimes don't even know that there's somebody who is missing. And um, yeah, I think this is this was one of the also big challenges. And, yeah, um, so yeah, and with that, I would I would probably echo then the more that you can identify those right resources from the beginning in your time, in your planning, uh, the better you're going to be able to set up the system, be able to do a, a really much better uh, rollout plan too, I'm assuming. Yes, yes, correctly. And uh, I think another one is um, coming back to the countries. You will also have with so many countries, also many governmental or local law restrictions and, and uh, which are uh, forcing you to implement also new processes, you know, additional processes, especially for invoicing or looking at Latin, Amer uh, Latin American countries taxation. I mean, I've never saw such an overblown taxation system and process like it is in, in, in Brazil, for example, or the Latin American countries. And uh, I think these things uh, should be definitely planned way in advance. Uh, and and uh, also at best at, at best possible also end to end tested. <laughs> so maybe not only one time, maybe several times to see if it really works. <laughs> yes, but um, that's the uh, that's the best case. Yeah? So <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Gotta gotta love uh, taxes and regulations and all that legal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so let's move on to our next question then. Sure. What effect has Ariba had on uh, your transformation? Oh yeah, so I think uh, Ariba, so Ariba helped us in this case pretty much because um, I would say 50% of the users knew already Ariba before. Or had worked with Ariba before. Um, of course, not with a, with a let's say more or less basic or standard version as we had it at the beginning of, of day one. They were of course used to a, a sophisticated enhanced system, yeah, which was already established since many many years. Yeah, and uh, but I think from the groundings, uh, this this helped already a lot. Yeah. Whereas I have been always, always again surprised that I got so much feedback from people and saying I'm seeing the system the first time. Where I was thinking, hey, you worked with the system already before. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, you, you know, the, the thing is, you also have to differentiate there. The, there are those users in the system who are frequently working, they are frequently raising PRs, frequently approving PRs, and and and, and also helping and re uh, revising the things. But then there are just these kind of people who are doing approvals and nothing else. So they are maybe just logging in once a week. Uh, so this is a differentiation between uh, Ariba users. Uh, so that's that's something very important. But I think uh, it helped. It helped definitely a lot. So for the transformation, now I, I I think if we would have moved only with an SAP system without Ariba, it would have been much more difficult, I think, <laughs> because the feedback was actually that um, after so many years having a shared service center, the people lost a lot of knowledge and basic SAP uh, functions and 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 um, yeah, how it is working actually. And if you would have started only with SAP, I think this would have been a, a much more bigger challenge than than it was. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, okay, then so I you know you worked with uh, TCS, and uh, I want to kind of ask a question about that too. So as a partner, how has TCS played a role in your overall success of, of this transformation of this project? I would say without TCS, I would have had a 72-hour day, I guess. <laughs> and uh, also, I, I would not have been able to, to solve many, many issues and problems. Uh, so, I mean, there were numerous and countless things we, we faced really before day one and after day one. And I think without TCS, it would it would just have been impossible to manage it. And uh, and um, you always need also a good partner who is uh, who is really non knowledgeable in the complete systems yeah, and also in the background and development, developing the system, enhancing the system doing small corrections which are done actually not on a user level but actually in the background level also on, on, on tables and on ABAP and uh, 
And I think without TCS, I, I wouldn't have had the, I would say the success we are, we are striving in, into now. You know? <laughs> so time after time. Huh? <laughs> because the other challenge was definitely for me that um, at the beginning I was GPO for S2P. But then a few months later, they gave me uh, or they enhanced actually or enlarged my function, uh, which became the P2P. So in P2P meaning then that into the S2P function, they included also the accounting and payables. And with this, of course, new new challenges came also up. And um, and here um, I would say without the knowledge of TCS, um, this would be even more difficult. So I, 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 I can say that TCS is definitely a great partner here. And and I also have to say, it doesn't matter when I sent TCS a request, an email, an idea which just popped up. And this is this is also very interesting. Yeah? So when, when you're in these kind of transformations and you're thinking about something what needs to be improved, sometimes your ideas just pop up. Yeah? So and uh, you have to phrase it very quickly and you you you, you try you you have to try to, to to get it also implemented somehow quickly and here i must say tcs was always very supportive now it doesn't matter which which timing of a day if it was night or day so they, they always responded very quickly and uh, i think this is a this is one big attribute for for success Wonderful. Yeah, great. I'm so glad that they were so helpful with uh, best practices best, um, and with responsiveness to help make that uh, a really successful experience. Um, I do have a question from one of our attendees. Uh, what is your experience in managing SAP as well as TCS at the same time? Uh, because SAP will always have its shared services bundled together. Um. Yeah, I think in our case it was um, it was a bit different. Yeah, so in our case actually TCS more or less became also a shared service center for their let's say legacy system and the plan was really to move into that one yeah, so and uh, this then means of course that in the meantime you are having actually not a real shared service center but actually tcs is becoming or became the shared service center and um, especially for accounting and payables and uh, i think therefore the yeah the, the managing between sap and and then tcs actually went hand in hand if this is answering the question. Great. Um, uh, I guess the uh, do, you, do you find that there was a, a benefit um, to you know, having both uh, the SAP shared services and TCS then having kind of both those both those brains working together? Yes, I think so. It, I think it is beneficial. Yeah? Um, Whereas it is like with every organization, not everybody know from each other sometimes, not everybody is uh, um, also uh, working hand in hand. And this is then also a job of the GPO to get everybody then also together. So part after part, time after time, part after part. And uh, uh, I so, and I think, Oh, no, I, I, I know it. Yeah. So as soon as you get this, then manage that everybody is really also working together, know from it, each other, know when he has to communicate whom or when information has to flow to, to, to whom, then it's very, very beneficial. Yes, I would say yes. Yeah. Great. Um, and I think we have a another question too. Um, I guess so knowing that you know any transformation implies a lot of these challenges that you're speaking of um at the end you're going to get benefits uh to be in this you know, in a procurement 4.0 uh could you let us know which are the most important benefits that you got so in procurement just or you mean overall in the s2p 
Um, yes, the, yeah, yeah, the, the benefits that you've that you've seen. Um, so in, in, in terms of uh, working, for example, with TCS together, um, I think my personal, especially my personal benefit here over the whole time was that I learned a lot from TCS also in um, in the not only theoretical things, but also in SAP functions and 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 uh, I would say more deeper things and insights I, I never had before. Yeah, so TCS me helped helped me definitely to 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 grow yeah, in my own role and my own function. And um, when it comes to procurement, the benefits here were that the direct. So at the beginning it was that I had been always the link yeah, between procurement and the complete organization with or to to TCS, and everything flowed actually through me, yeah, which which. Uh, accommodated to an overflow of, of information and uh, of course as one person you can't handle everything huh? but uh, from time to time I, I could manage it that the connection between the procurement uh, people and TCS uh, uh, became then direct and here every time and also procurement had issues with SAP or had uh, some some and, and, and when we talk about issues it's not only about a technical issue it's also about um, I would say a business technical understanding of procurement things. Yeah, so I'll give you just one example is how do I get logistics logistic costs added to the purchase orders? Yeah? And there are different types of logistics costs. And um, here I must say that TCS brought also not only the technical experience into it uh, to procurement, but also enhanced the procurement people with business related uh, um, and procurement related uh, knowledge. And uh, I would say this is very, very, very beneficial. And still is. Yeah, because you can have the have the tool, but you need to know how to use it, right? And and yes. have that that guidance and best practices along with it. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, great. We have another uh, question from an attendee as well. Uh, what is your experience about timeline estimation versus actually how long things uh, took. So timeline estimation meaning when when we did some developments or when we did some implementation of something or to what I'm going to I'm going to assume that it's the implementation of uh, you know like basically plan timelines for what you worked out versus what you actually saw. Yeah, so there are of course always always gaps and differences. Yeah, so let's say um, let's say we will talk really about an enhancement, a development. Something has to be changed, or something has really to to be, yeah, uh, I would say um, revised somehow. Yeah, I think that the time of the, the plan time, you will almost never reach the, the plan time. Yeah? So I would say that's almost impossible yeah? because you will always face and encounter something in between you. You didn't thought about it. And even if you have a team of 50 people yeah, who are all thinking about something very accurately, there's always something what is block or held, holding back or, or giving a little bit of a road blocker. And especially when you are coming into a new organization and, and f having also the a new culture, new philosophy, you also always have to onboard many other people into these things. Yeah? And um, this is sometimes then, uh, yeah, I would say extending the time, yeah? which <laughs> which was previously planned by maybe, maybe 10, 20, 30 yeah? percent. This, this it can happen. It happens actually yeah, as well. Yeah, so. Right. And, and I guess, you know, whenever you're thinking about it and it's a transformation you want to make sure that you're doing things right and as you mentioned previously you wanted you, you said hey plan do the timing um you know in the beginning put that work in up front so uh if the the plan winds up going a little bit longer it's because you're thinking about all these things and um, making sure that you're really trying to do what's best for your organization i'm sure yeah um, i think Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, so what I wanted to add is I think what is very important to know when it comes to P, P, S2P, P2P procurement, um, all three, let's say, functions or, or yeah, organizational description of functions, they are very central in a company. So this means when you make changes, when you implement something, you're, you're uh, touching many other functions in a company. 
Many other functions are actually linked to this one. And uh, what I faced every time, every time that, every time somebody was missed, somebody always was missed out to be informed, to really check also on what what implications will this have for this function? What what consequences will have uh, this function? Do I have then also to train them now this function because they're coming up something new for them and, and so on and so on. I think this is also one big challenge. Um, it comes again a bit to change management, but it's also more about um, yeah, really thinking through everything. So what is really happening when I do a change and who all will be affected and which consequences are coming up for everybody? I think this is a very important thing uh, you should always consider. Absolutely. I think, you know, a lot of times I think we probably get into our little silos and what we're working on yeah. and focusing on, um, yeah. but then seeing the overall picture end to end and really all those impacts yes. is, is really important. I mean, you All want right, to I have the buy-in. Yeah, you want to have the buy-in from everybody because if you're not getting it before, then somebody will block you always. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I great, great advice. Um, and I think we have time for one more question. Um, so, just real quick in the essence of time, we'll we'll try to make it a little bit short. Um, do you have any predictions for the future of procurement over the next five to ten years? Yes. Um, <clears throat> It's a nice, this is a nice question. So I personally think on a global perspective, especially for big organizations, Ariba will become more and more, I would say, prominent and uh, it will take more more place in the in, in, in the in the ERP world, I would say. Uh, also in, 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 in the terms of uh, automation, having less transactional work, um, trying to get rid of transactional work, especially in order to free up the employees to think about the things they are actually, which is actually their core job. Uh, so and this is this is one thing what what I've seen also in the past that uh, and also right now after day one, yeah, because we we had so much transactional work with, with procurement that they couldn't concentrate on other things. So I think this this will be this will increase in the future. Of course, it will go hand in hand with cost reductions and, and probably also with the with the side effect that you will not need so many people anymore doing procurement operational jobs uh, because you are able to automate more and more. So, and I think with Ariba, the case is the more you enhance, the more automated it will become, the less transactional workload you will have. Yeah? And this is again a little bit of chicken and the egg. So what do you want? You want to invest enough so that you get a higher automation or you keep it on a balanced level and uh, um, you, you see then how you shift the workloads to your own people. So I think this is one thing. But on the other hand, what I also see is when it comes to sourcing, for example, um, Ariba is great also for using sourcing. Yeah? But I think you will never, never come to the point where you will enable everybody in Ariba sourcing or integrate into Ariba sourcing because you will always have to to do also sourcing activities with smaller companies and and they are often saying oh no that's too much either it's too much cost for us it's too much uh, time for us to to really in invest uh, our people to 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 work with Ariba yeah? you will also take yourself away a bit of flexibility uh, reaching out like in old school times, so I call it the old school procurement times or sourcing times, really reaching out to, to the vendors offline, uh, really sending them just the emails, making a, a, a sourcing with them without the system. I think if, you, if this falls apart, you will lose a lot of flexibility and you will make yourself very handcuffed, I would say, yeah? and uh, then the things will become just and this is this is a maybe just to, to, to close this uh, question. I call it always we shouldn't come to a point where it's only about clicking. <laughs> right? <laughs> so because then the charm actually falls apart of really resourcing and category management and these kind of things. Gotcha. So, you know, there, there's still that human aspect that'll that you see in the next, you know, five to 10 years. There's still the, that connection, but really there is going to be that push for automating the day to day, letting people focus on the more strategic initiatives of their, you know, of, of, of their organization. Yes. I mean, maybe, maybe just just as a 
idea from my side, maybe for, for SAP and Ariba and TCS to think about it for the future. Maybe thinking about the implementation because now with COVID, we are facing ourselves more and more to have not anymore the personal interrelationship. So coming to the office or inviting the supplier to the office and, and having these negotiations, but you will face to, to have more and more uh, um, things over Teams and camera and so on. Maybe there is a good opportunity to implement into the sourcing process of Ariba, also the negotiation part, including the camera part and that you that you can do these kind of activities. So maybe this is a, oh, probably SAP Ariba is working on it already anyway. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Well, Thank you, Dario, so much for your time um, and your valuable knowledge um, you know, and how to best begin and execute the procurement transformation. Um, now I'd like for us to uh, focus our attention on the innovations Ariba is investing in to uh, best address procurement needs of the customers. So to help us do that, uh, Falco Fed Felchin um, from Ariba's Procurement Center of Excellence is going to do some whiteboarding with us. So with that, uh, Falco, if you can feel free to start whenever you are ready. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. So let me let me find the right slide deck. Here we go. Can you see it? I do see the presentation now. Yeah, I can see. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks for having uh, for having me here in this uh, in this in this round table. Um, and uh, thanks for the uh, my the other presenters for sharing their uh, these 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 insights. Um, and I think um, you mentioned a couple of times like uh, how what SAP does at the moment and how we're going to perform. We just uh, we just um, um, had you basically talking about uh, SAP integrating some of these kind of camera functionalities. Um, and if you uh, look up the internet, you'll see that there's uh, um, there was just a recent announcement on SAP um, integrating the Teams capabilities. And I think that goes in the that goes in the right direction. On the on the other hand, um, it really, it's interesting to also like listen to my uh, to my colleagues, um, which sometimes say they think that. From, for example, from a sourcing perspective, we will have machines doing sourcing events prior having cars driving autonomously, right? So let's see. So what what that what that what that shows you is that there are different uh, kind of also like opinions of how the future could look like, and um, and we did have this in SAP as well. And I think for the um, for first time for a long long time, we uh, we now have a strategy of how we think as SAP procurement can uh, the future should look like, right? And we call this our North Star initiative, right? So basically, um, we, we developed that clear um, vision of where things uh, will, will going to be. And uh, I'm going to talk about like what we recently did, what we will uh, do in the future and um, what we uh, how this how this vision could uh, could uh, look like. My name is Falko Feltjen. Um, I'm part of a global team who actually supports the direct material piece of our solution offering and specifically um, what we do around the Ariba network or as we now call it the SAP business network. This is this is my focus, um, but independent of that, I'll go you walk you through in the next 10 minutes through our uh, through our um, innovation of future. And, and Falco, would you mind uh, switching on your video camera so we can see your wonderful face? <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me a sec. I try to. So here we go. No. Turn on. So I have to excuse the long hair, right? It's kind of the COVID look. <laughs> <laughs> you COVID, look great. <laughs> uh, lockdown, lockdown look. Um, but I think that's uh, that should be that should be okay these these days. I tend to have a little bit like shorter shorter hair. So disclaimer: um, obviously, I'm talking future. Um, so uh, that that means that um, it has to be taken with a little bit of like a grain a grain of salt. Um, but I'm going to tell you like where we where we are in regards to these uh, these innovations. 
So, a bit of whiteboarding, right? Uh, not not sharing not sharing slides. If you're more into like uh, PowerPoint and and videos, right? You'll find a lot of that already in the internet and on our web page. Um, I'm do I'm planning to do a little bit of whiteboarding. So. Uh, Let's take a like, step back and think about a second, like what that could be, right, that red curve here. It's actually a, a product lifecycle curve, right? That's the way how I, how I thought it makes most sense to, uh, to talk about what we, what we have in mind, right? Um, from, it starts with, a, um, with the product introduction, basically the product ramp up phase, then the product uh, material is kind of in operations or maintenance or needs to be optimized, right? Uh, we don't we don't stop basically looking after uh, a better a better price tag where you can source cheap, cheaper or better. Um, and there's certainly a phase where the uh, the product uh, will will get out of get out of life, right? And we we try more and more to really look at our like what what we do. As from a solution perspective, to combine and to make sure we, we, we touch base on all these on all these areas where we in the past um, maybe we we didn't look into this one for example um, too much and left out a couple of, couple of key key capabilities which we now brought in. From a, a, a stakeholder perspective, right, we much much broaden our our footprint, right. We now not only look into the like a CPO, which was our kind of key. Stakeholder in the past, um, we have engineers, right? We talk, we talk to again product introduction, right? Engineers play a big role when we need to uh, when we need to um, buy components, uh, build up materials for a new product. We're looking at supply chains, right? Guess who basically gets us the the quantities we want to sell in the in the future, right? It's a, it's a head of supply chain and his and his team. Guess who is in the operational piece who is aligning with suppliers on a day to day basis on capacities to get our products uh, on on time. The quality warehouse people, so a lot of different stakeholders um, which we address with our with our uh, solutions, right? And we really try to bring not only these faces, but really also these internal stakeholders um, all together. And that's that's one of the key kind of aspects uh, we look at. And of course, right, I talked about that. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much focusing on the on the Ariba or the SAP business network. It's not just only like our internal four walls, right? It's the network out there, right? So all these um, all these components. Uh, I'll talk about sourcing. I will talk about uh, supplier management. I'll talk about P2P. Um, all of that has a component of a an external trading partner to collaborate with, right? And the and it's a key it's a key component in this in this process. If you think about um, like when I when I see companies implementing S4, right? Mo many of them, even if not all of them, they rethink their processes doing so, right? Nobody goes there and say, you know, I have, this is my ACC, right? I kind of do a copy paste in, in S4. They rethink their processes. Uh, but uh, if you think about where are the constraints in this process design, right? It's not necessarily your internal people, right? It's your own company in the end, right? You can, to some extent, do uh, what you think makes sense, right? The two constraints are outside your four, outside your four walls, right? How 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 often can a supplier react on your uh, on your order, right? How how does a supplier align with your with your M, with your MRP, right? So, and you need to understand these constraints in order to build up. A proper S4 environment, right? Robust for for the for the future, right? Otherwise, you will if you don't do this, you will have S4 implemented and run into issues right away because you basically uh, have a fantastic iPhone, so to say, but you forgot the SIM card, right? If you will. So there are trading partners out there. Partners um, are suppliers, right? Could be indirect, uh, could be direct suppliers. Um, from different industries, of course, contract manufacturer is a very big topic at the moment, right? Many, many companies um, we look at this uh, outsourced manufacturing processes, leverage the cost effects. Would it be CPG, pharma, what, what, ha what have you, life science? Um, and um, and they understand they lose control, right? If they they and they lose the price, the, like the cost benefit 
if they don't keep the control, if they do not have the insights um, into, into those contract manufacturers. Um, I'm talking asset service people, logistic service providers, and, and so forth. Now, let's look into the, like the, the innovations, right? There's this source and contract piece, right, which pretty much fits into this like, product introduction phase. And we, uh, we basically, one of the key aspects is that for companies who run on multiple ER, ERPs, uh, we make sure that you, you have that one insight. Um, you, you do see all the contracts like distributed around, uh, around the different ERPs. You have one place where you can look up the contracts, right? where you can look up material information such as a forecast, right? a, compo a, a quantity forecast for a, for a, for a material. Um, this one is a bill of material, right? That's, I try to, to make this like uh, like sketchy, so, so to say, a bill of material. Um, and we have capabilities now um, which allow a procurement person to be alerted in case this engineer changes his product, right? Let's say the engineer wants to change simple things like the color. Let's say he wants to go for red. Now we alert in Arriva the, the procurement person the procurement person can immediately with a super quick RFP, a mini RFP, go to the supplier and say, how much is how much is red, right? Compared to blue in the past. And the supplier says, blue is five dollars per liter, red is a hundred dollars per liter. You might want to go with green, which is just like 20, right? The procurement person can go immediately back to this um, to this engineer and say, don't do this red thing, right? Um, and for the engineer at that point in time, it's easy to change, but he can go with green, no problem. Whereas in the past, procurement was informed after the product was fully designed, right? The red was kind of a given, and you just had to basically source something like the best red, which might be 95, 105 US dollars compared to the green one, which is just uh, 20, right? So the interlink, so we very much interlinked with these like PLM systems. Would it be our own? Would it be Siemens Team Center um, to really link the, en the engineers? Um, this functionality comes with like a clean sheet capabilities. Another very interesting piece is uh, in Germany, we have this Lieferkettengesetz, as we call it. That's kind of the supply chain law, which is a, uh, a, a law which goes into like transparency and supply chain. So you, as a company, you have to report on uh, where you source from, not only from your direct supplier, but also from the like the next tier and the and the, and the, and the tier after. And we do have nice capabilities there where in our um, SAP solution in the future, you will be able to ask the supplier for his kind of factory supply chain, right? Who is basically delivering these uh, these products down down the road so you get this transparency. And um, interesting wise, I, I think we are quite ahead uh, of the competition with this with this capability um, and um, and it's spot on right in Germany. You will have to have these capabilities because you need to report on that one. There are further capabilities. We talked about automation, right? There's a, there are capabilities which we uh, which we developed around uploading unstructured documents right into into sourcing and automatically in our RFP. Is, is created, right? Which very much obviously helps in terms of like efficient efficiency, right? There are metadata which are um, which are which are then uh, taken out of these documents, and the uh, and the event is created automatically. Auto sourcing, um, you might have heard of that one all, already. We developed uh, a lot of kind of it's like product portfolio in this area, sourcing and contract, together with some of the uh, automotive OE, OEMs. Which is based on what we what we do, but has these specific uh, automotive um, cap capabili capabilities, right? So for example, one of the capabilities here is um, sourcing planning, right? So you need to basically not only like, create that sourcing event. There's a whole planning uh, capability or, or or requirement around this. Get get your different phases in a, in a row in a in a sourcing event. Next thing in, in product ramp up, of course, that's all about aligning with suppliers on ramp up plans, right? At the moment in this uh, pandemic situation, uh, you can you can ask literally everyone what is the most important thing, right? And that's understanding when my supplier ramps up his capacity, when is the next lockdown, 
right? And not only with the key suppliers you do this anyway with, right? You need a scalable platform which allows you to literally with all of your suppliers understand their ramp up and ramp down plans these days. What is the inventory? What are they like how their production plans look like, right? And this is the capability we already had for a couple of years, but which we now extended to, to work with suppliers in a more granular, granular way, right? That might not sound like super, super fancy thing, right? But it's more workable, it's more applicable specifically to align in this critical situation where you need to align with, with suppliers. Then we have capabilities around like pre-series uh, order management, and that goes all the way down into, into the operational piece of the, of the life cycle curve, um, which is then around order management, quality collaboration, logistics collaboration, asset collaboration. And while we, we continuously improve the, for example, the order management piece, right? So we'll, you'll see that we are for more and more industries, uh, the Arriba network, for example, is, is applicable, right? Um, the, big, the big thing we did here in the past and going to do in the, in the future is we went away from these different networks in SAP, right? The Arriba network, logistics business network, and we combine them, right? So in the future going forward, you'll see that one SAP business network where there's one registration, right? Which you which will have one team who enables you on the on the network uh, and on these different on these different capabilities. That also helps drive to, to that helps in a lot of areas, right? Um, that's one of the key say in, innovation things we uh, we drive forward in the future. That comes with a lot of things, right? In terms of like the usability of the of the system, that all all comes together. Registration, as I said, um, and so and so forth. Renegotiation. That's another piece from an from an innovation perspective. We uh, we recently introduced capabilities where we kind of automatically check price tags for electronic components on the market and alert um, the system user once it's time to renegotiate contracts, right? I talked in the beginning about that, that great visibility, right? You would also understand, um, hey, I'm negotiating at the moment, but my colleague sitting in the US, right, already negotiated similar, a similar component, right? And you are, you have this transparency, but you also have this transparency on price tags and are alerted once, uh, once um, um, what's due for for renegotiation, many of these things, if not all, right, also play into the product uh, outlook, if you will, right? Would it be like bomb collaboration, introducing a new product? Because as a matter of fact, the product outlook comes comes basically together with the product intro at the same time, right? So all these things here apply as well you from you have to make the supplier understand that you're ramping down your capacity for the certain product ramping up something something else there are a lot of things going on here from a general perspective how, how much time is left uh you have about i would say two more minutes two more minutes okay perfect um from from a the more general generic perspective um we're very much after the uh, the end user adoption right um I mean, we fully understand this is this is key, and um, we've not. I feel we have not been like the best in that in that that area. Um, but we did a lot. I'll show you in a, in a, in, a, in a second. Um, that comes with personalization of the reports. That comes with guidance. That comes with automation, exception management. All these all these things. And just to give you a couple of examples, can, I think we can share the slides afterwards. Um, we have the single page event creation, right? So in the past, users said, okay, you need, in Arriba, you need to click here and you need to click here and then another box opens, right? We made that very, very, very simple, right? Because things in the end should not be so complex um, because so, so we actually use the, cap the capabilities we have, right? Nobody can have the most fantastic e-auction capability and what have you. If nobody's using it, right? Uh, what's, what's, the, what's the point? Um, we talked about this upload main agreement, right? So you can basically upload the uh, unstructured documents and we create these, uh, um, these, these agreements in the system. And going back to my picture, building it up again. When it comes to like usability, um, we created this, uh, this uh, supplier web UI, right? 
So some of you guys might all might know so know that the ones that was in the, like our old user interface for suppliers. This is the new one, completely personalized um, widgets that the user can go. You can also connect into non SAP systems at the customer and all the stakeholders at the supplier. If they're using the web UI, I think all like, like all of them could also use like a B2B fully electronic integration. But in case they're using the web UI, all of them, planners, customer service, warehouse managers, quality managers, go to the same web UI. It's that one face to their to their customers, to their Ariba customers. Um, another thing I want to point out is we put quite some effort when we develop new capabilities to also put some like guidance around around this. Guidance is a big topic, right? You know this capability of guided buying, guided sourcing, but it's also like next functionalities because we might we deal with very small suppliers and for example this screen talks about um automatic automatically packaging and creating labels right uh, when someone is sending out a advanced shipping notice and we put quite some effort into explaining what we what we do here and guiding our um, our end users i talked about exception management um, we have reporting capabilities where we capture exceptions in terms, for example, an order gets out, the supplier uh, confirms deviating from the original order or from the forecast. We capture that. We, the whole thing is, autom is automated, right? We just capture the exceptions and then list this to the, to the buyer and the buyer can then approve these exceptions or, uh, or, re or reject it. Right again, user user guide. Customers love this capability. It comes with um, like a comment capability, messaging capabilities. So you have this whole exception process really, really structured. The last, the very last thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to automation is uh, our capability in in terms of interoperability. Right. So um, in the past, suppliers said, "I don't want to go on the Ariba network." Right. Think about you have a friend. You are on, on a Vodafone contract. Your friend is on a Telefonica contract. Right. You don't want to convince your friend to go on the same contract as you are. You expect the two networks talking together. Right. And that's exactly what we did. Look up here. So we, we had created this interoperability with other networks out there. Right. We have 40 partner networks. For example, we have a great um, interoperability going on with uh, Elemica, right, which is basically in the uh, uh, one of the key networks in the in the chemical industry and a customer on the Ariba network has access to suppliers on the Elemica network, right, almost instantly, which is which is fantastic for the supplier because the supplier doesn't have to change anything in the way he works, right? People are just talking like if you call your friend, which has a different different uh, uh, telephone contract. And all of this uh, finds its way in our North Star initiative. Again, as I said, you will find a lot of like sl uh, slideware videos around, uh, which look potentially nicer than my than my whiteboard. <laughs> but, um, that's where it all finds uh, finds way. Many of these things are already uh, go um, are generally available GA as we call it this still this year. Some of them are already available. Um, but look out for this North Star initiative, SAP. That's where you will get the latest and greatest how we see the future in procurement and supply chain. Great. Thank you so much for that, Falco. Really appreciate um, you know, giving us that insight into how we're you know, simplifying to inc you know, increase adoption, have that collaboration um, and all that visibility. So uh, with that, uh, thank you again, Falco. And uh, we're going to switch over to Prane Nayar, um, who's going to share an overview of how TCS is successfully partnering with their clients on procurement transformations. Over to you, Prane. Wonderful, Christina. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys can see my screen. Yep, I see your screen. Wonderful. So uh, thank you so much. I think we had some excellent, you know, sessions with Dario uh, Falco talking about innovation, you know, so it's been an, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, what, what I'm going to talk about is, you know, the outside in approach, you know, these are the analysts which are saying in the market. Uh, you know, there's a saying which is going, which Prashant also spoke about, you know, while, while sourcing is critical, supplier management is critical. 
But look at what the IDC says. You know, procurement spend is the largest expenditure for all product centric based companies. Uh, and you might have heard what Falco said with his areas of uh, contract manufacturing. You know, how can a supplier change a color from red to green to green to blue? You know, how that decisions can be drawn. And, and these are the decisions which actually causes the lack of, uh, you know, uh, whether it is satisfaction or disfact, uh, satisfaction among different parties of the, of the ecosystem. Uh, Gartner talks about, you know, the, the SV, SPPM, you know, your supplier, your procurement, your vendor management, the key areas, the key success, you know, these are the ones which, uh, which needs to be analyzed, which needs to be focused. And finally, you know, uh, the term which we use in SAP as uh, with the TCS and SAP as a partner, the intelligence spend. You got to go out from your legacy spend and focus on intelligence spend, whether it's strategic or you know automation. We talk about predictive analytics. Prashant spoke about that and value driven, which is which is very critical. And we will all seen it. You know, right now I think Dario mentioned about COVID and how cameras are important. This all goes back into how my procurement department goes in, and that's very clearly visible from that outside-in approach, which these you know top-notch uh, analysts are saying. So where does it end? You know, where does it go from here? And these are the critical factors a procurement officer or a or a procurement office is looking for. Uh, the priority items, you know, the cost reduction. Uh, it's been the mantra for procurement all throughout the the journey. Uh, and I personally feel now the mantra has to go beyond, you know, not just cost reduction. It should be beyond savings. You know, procurement is growing. It's now hand and on with your CFO industry. So CPO and CFO are working hand and on. Uh, managing risk, very critical. Again, going back to supplier collaboration, supplier risk. Uh, can this supplier give us the right, you know, product at the right time? And and in COVID time, we've seen it. Supply chain visibility becomes a critical factor. And if we have a network like how Ariba brings in the whole of business network, that's how you draw all the factors in. Increase cash flow. Again, you know, uh, not sure how many of my customers have seen it, but dynamic discounting, which comes as part of Ariba, brings a lot of these features in which you can uh, do a, a rules framework. You can bring in these, uh, you know, cash flow advantages for the suppliers and internally for your organization. And very important, you know, I think the last piece is very critical for a CPO, introducing new services. You know, new business models, new things which can really enhance the way their organization is being structured and looking across. We heard Dario speaking, right? 32 countries, uh, everybody coming along, the, the taxation around it, the challenges around it, and how we can drill, develop, draw a new services from there. That, that's where things are heading towards. And what are the priorities, you know, focus on? Uh, we, we spoke about consolidated spend, which is I think we all know that's what intelligence spend is all about. Uh, uh, driving decisions. Uh, Dario spoke uh, or even Falco spoke about an, a, a new automation or a new uh, innovation coming with exception management handling. I think that's where decision making becomes very easy. Driving efficiency. Again, you know, both of them spoke about how my procurement department will become more strategic in nature you know, instead of just being a click, click, click department. And of course, additional adoption, which this whole session is all about. So this is where you know the CPO industry heading. So my customers are doing the same, and, and this is the kind of intent we as TCS wants to draw for all the customers around the globe. What we do as an offering, this, this covers the end-to-end -end offering. I'm not going to go deep into this, but you know we do we do suffer uh, we do support procurement, contract management, you know your master data, your category management, analytics, and even sales order. I think. Uh, uh, Falco spoke about the trading partner organization, right? That's where once a PO gets created, the sales order gets transferred to, right? That's where the whole purchase order to the sales order movement happens. So we have these end-to-end -end offerings which we can support our partners, our customers. With, and that's what is structured. The one thing which I want to call out, you know, I think this is a very critical offering which we want to bring on to our customers and and you know internally. Uh, and this this gets very well stitched up to the last session we had with Falco, the innovation angle. You know, how do you test the innovation? Being a cloud product, Ariba, uh, they, they they they'll come up with these uh, quarter releases. You know, every quarter a new thing comes up, a new area comes up. How do we look at that? How do we keep enhancing our you know, whether it's an implementation already done or you plan to do the implementation? And that's where you know, as a partner, as in service integrator, we come in. We build a, 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 a you know, TCS Crystallis is one of our uh, flagship products, a, a trademark product, which is a combination of various best practices, industry configured solutions, and what at, at, 
that a practice at Ariba level we've done, we've enhanced it to Ariba, which means that you know this is available for SAP Ariba, uh, you know, uh, a well-driven solution which can come up with predictable out outcomes. You can look at how to take it to the customers rapidly, your business rapidly, and very critically, how can you test the new new features quickly? That's the importance of you know how we want to draw it out. So uh, quickly summarizing, uh, you know, and, and I know I was very fast. I wanted to be, you know, make some time for the questions more. But the intent uh, as a partner, uh, as a as an innovator, as a differentiator, you know, we want to look at our customers and how can we take them to, you know, faster time to market. You know, what are the best practices we bring in, whether it is localization, uh, language translation. You know, Dario mentioned about change management. You know, what factors. We want to bring in so that the customers adopt, customers see that uh, you know benefit out of that. The competitive advantage, you know, making sure that there is a factoring from an industry perspective. You know, every industry has a view on procurement. How can we, from our domain knowledge, from our uh, expertise in the industry, bring those knowledge back to the customer landscape? The agility, very critical. You know, uh, transformation is key. Uh, agility is key. You know, and. and Cloud adoption, which uh, Ariba is all about, you know, three months, every three months you have a new product. How can we make that fast and more secure and more efficient? And very important, you know, minimal business disruption. We don't want, uh, you know, our customers, business team to look at those uh, big training materials, you know, hand holding of transaction codes. We want it simple, straightforward, and, and that is where as a partner, uh, you know, Ariba is, is is adding in, as Falco said, there are new UIs coming in for supply chain collaboration. One single view for your warehouse manager, for your quality manager, and that is where minimal business disruption gets enhanced with. With that, I'll just sum up, you know, TCS as a partner, you know, you can rely on us and the intent of our differentiators, you know, we want to accelerate your procurement transformation, bringing in Crystallis as our key differentiator and helping your journey to accelerate by up to 20%. Thank you so much. You're looking forward to work with all of you. Christina, handing back to you. Great, thanks so much, Pranay. Um, uh, really appreciate that, uh, you know, bringing lots of value to our procurement transformation. Um, and with our last couple of minutes, I'm going to pass it over to Eric O'Brien, who's gonna be wrapping up our roundtable discussion. Thank you, Christina. And, and thank you very much to all the speakers. Uh, I hope everyone has, found this experience to be positive and time well spent. Thank you, Dara, for the insights of challenges, innovation, where to start. Thank you, Falco, for talking about, you know, where the future of procurement is going. And thank you to Pernay for, you know, summarizing TCS as a partner. The two things I would just like to address, and we are right on time, actually, so kudos to everyone for keeping in their, their timer shades of their session, uh, just general next steps. So we'll reach out to you directly to really just talk about on a more individual level the challenges that you're seeing in your landscape. Where do you want to go? What is your current procurement uh, process and where do you want to see it go in the future? So we can do a variety of things and really a good first step is TCS coming in and doing something that I'm passionate about calling a procurement health check where we get an understanding of your current landscape and then what are your goals in two, three, four, five years? How can Ariba and TCS help you get there? So that's really an immediate next step. We have some questions that we weren't able to address, so we'll also be able to address those individually and hopefully extend this conversa conversation to get really more of a unique perspective on your current challenges and landscapes. So once again, thank you for everyone for your time. Thank you for everyone for the speakers and their commitment. I thought this was a great success and I really appreciate it. Um, thank you from TCS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.